Today, what I'd like to talk about is uh, functional dyspepsia in children. We're going to go through an overview of, of this topic. And this is the outline of what we'll be discussing today. We'll be talking about what childhood functional dyspepsia is. We're going through a case scenario that uh, many pediatricians may see and kind of talk a little bit about what is the pediatrician looking for when they see a child like that. We'll also uh, go into some of the potential contributing factors in functional uh, childhood functional dyspepsia, what the current treatments are, and then also talk a little bit about what may be coming down the pike or in the future. So what is functional dyspepsia? Functional dyspepsia is an abdominal pain related functional gastrointestinal disorder. Functional being that, in, in a sense, how things are working and they're not working properly so the child is having pain or discomfort. With conventional um, investigations, there's no evidence of an inflammatory, anatomic, metabolic, or neoplastic process that explains the symptoms. So for example, if a child had a mitochondrial disorder, they would not fit within this type of diagnosis. The frequency, which was recently defined by a group of experts, should occur once a week for at least two months. And the, where is the pain, where is the discomfort for functional dyspepsia? Where it's persistent, recurrent discomfort centered in the upper abdomen, so above the belly button area, as you can see right here. It's not relieved by defecation or associated with a change in stool frequency or form. If this occurs, this is more consistent with another entity, which is a cousin of functional dyspepsia known as irritable bowel syndrome. Now, functional dyspepsia can really affect a lot of children. It depends on how you ask and in what setting you ask um, in terms of what percentage of children seem to be affected. But studies seem to suggest that anywhere between 3.5% all the way up to 27%, so at times more than a quarter of children, may actually have a diagnosis of functional dyspepsia. So why is it important? Well, one, it affects a lot of children. And two, it really impacts the quality of life. Interesting study by Dr. Youssef in 2006 took a look at the quality of life of children who had different diagnoses. On the, this axis right here, you have QOL, quality of life scores, ranging from 0 to 100. The higher the score there, the better you are. And here on the x-axis, you have different diagnoses. So you have healthy children, HC, those with inflammatory bowel disease, those who have Crohn's disease, for example. Children with GERD, and we heard about gastroesophageal reflux from Dr. Nurko today. And then functional abdominal pain, which is where functional dyspepsia goes in. And what you can actually see is that functional abdominal pain children have worse quality of life as compared to all of these other diagnoses.